Today we're going to review the best cavalry combos for open field combat in Rise of Kingdoms. And I'm going to give you everything you need to know about cavalry, talking about which commanders are viable, which ones aren't. We'll talk about the best talents. We'll talk about the best equipment and even the investment order. So stick around in this video for pretty much everything you need to know about cavalry as of the arrival of Huo and Justinian into the game. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And every time new commanders land in the game, I make a guide about the best commander pairings for the troop type associated with the new commanders that land in the game. Cavalry just landed, and so it's time to talk about the best cavalry combos. And I have personal experience using Huo, and I'm not going to say this is a lot of kills, all right? 2.5 million is not a ton, but I've had some time to use him in the open field, and his reports are definitely a step above what we could get before with commanders like XY. So some commanders now move into the meta, and others start to fade out. And that's why you're subscribed to the channel, because as soon as these sort of changes happen, I make videos and guides designed to help you make the best investments possible in Rise of Kingdoms. So thank you for throwing a like on the video and for considering subscribing to the channel. Let's get started with just a quick review of the Cavalry Commanders, and I want to talk about the ones that you really shouldn't invest in. They're a trap at this point. Not really a trap, but they're just not meta. They're not as strong as what else you could do. And by the way, if there's any one thing you really want to see, use the timestamps in the description. You can jump ahead to whatever you'd like. So let's start with reviewing cavalry commanders that you really shouldn't use in the open field. The garrison cavalry commanders are definitely a no-go for field. I would love if they were good, like rally commanders are, but it's just not the case. Almost never do we find a garrison commander that's also truly meta in the field. So you've got Yadviga, you've got Jan Ziska. Don't consider using them in the field, in my opinion. They're really not that strong. In addition... When we look at other cavalry commanders that really don't make the cut, we of course need to talk about Khan and Saladin. Both of these commanders recently got museum buffs. Now, this is something that's available in KVK Season 4 and beyond. And even with the museum buffs, yeah, they're better, but they're still not good enough. Khan gets defense and active skill damage, which is nice. Saladin gets cavalry attack and march speed. Maybe if they had a double relic, we would be having a different conversation. But even with these buffs, once you get to KVK Season 4 and beyond, Khan and Saladin no longer make the cut. Now, I use Saladin for a very, very, very long time. I'm not saying he's suddenly terrible. What I'm trying to say is that he just isn't as strong as the many other options that you have. In addition, we need to talk about cavalry commanders that I think you could use, but just aren't all that exciting like Attila and Takeda. I get that you can get some pretty good trades in the open field with Attila and Takeda, but the kind of guidance you're here for is what I think wins KVKs, and what wins KVKs is big area of effect damage and big debuffs, ideally the kind of debuffs that make the target take more damage from everyone that's hitting the target. Okay, and Attila and Takeda don't really do that. There is an attack debuff here, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, a commander like Double C actually is more performant than you might expect in a 1v1 situation, but even with his relic is not going to cut it. He's not going to make our list today. Uh, and also Bertrand is like kind of usable as a primary commander with his defense tree, but he has an active skill that is just super weird. He basically makes it so that for the next period of time, you do skill damage to the target every second, and people just walk away from that. You'd rather have big, boom, air, air, just area of effect damage and debuffs, and he really isn't doing that at all. So all those commanders are like pretty cool for cavalry, but they simply don't make the cut. Now, this brings us, by the way, to the commander pairings that I think are actually the best, as well as some commanders that I'm going to talk about that, like, you could use, 
and they're kind of interchangeable. They're all pretty strong, but not quite the top tier. So let's start with the number four best cavalry combo, and that is going to be XY as the primary paired with either Nevsky as your best choice or even Minamoto will work. You could pair with um, either Honda or you could pair with uh, also a leadership commander, Mehmed. I need to put them into the filter here. There's a bunch of ways that you can get XY to do very, very well. And although I have removed him from my rotation, specifically because he has no defensive stats at all, he is the definition of a glass cannon. He does area of effect damage. It is a defense reduction applied in an area of effect as well. And he reduces your rage requirement and enhances the damage of your combo. XY is really strong. He's, I would say, in the number four pairing of cavalry combos, but like really not the top tier anymore. With regard to the talents on XY, they're pretty straightforward. This talent build, you're basically going to be seeing almost everywhere on this list. In fact, I think this is the talent build you will see everywhere. Uh, you go all in on the skill tree and then put points into the cavalry tree to support. And people have really come around on the idea that, hey, wait a minute, rage generation is insane. And even though there's a cap on the amount of rage you can get per turn, 220, it is worth overraging sometimes in order to get more rage other times and have it all apply. So I think that going just like this is the way to go. And the more rage you generate, the better it is to generate rage. That is a video I made a long, long time ago, proving that out with the math. But let's get a look now at the number three. Cavalry best pairing I think you could look at, and that is going to be Nevsky or a Huo primary using William as the secondary. And William is actually mental. He does area of effect damage, but it's kind of this weird rectangle. But he is going to reduce skill damage buffs on the target and reduce their march speed, which is pretty cool. Um, so extra skill damage from buffs cannot take effect on that target that you hit, which is really good. But he also has instant proc damage. And the thing that's truly mental is that he makes it so that your whole team gets a defense and rage boost if you hit multiple targets. And if you're in big fights, which is where you probably ought to be, yeah, you're going to land with this area of effect damage a lot. The only thing that's super weird about him these days is that 1,500 damage factor is looking really weak. If you don't already have William, I don't know that it's a great plan to put tons of sculptures into him. I mean, he is meta now, but like this damage factor is pretty low and he's leaning really heavily now on the utility of his area of effect rage and defense buff, which by the way, is absolutely freaking correct. In terms of talents on Nevsky, as I mentioned, these are the same. It's the same on XY, it's the same on Nevsky, heck, it is the same on Huo. So with that said, let's get to the number two combo. And I'm going to be honest with you and say that these combos, number two and number one, are pretty interchangeable in terms of their power level. And the number two combo I'm going to give you is Nevsky primary paired with Joan secondary. There's just really incredible magic with these two heroes together, and that has to do with the combination of how Joan provides an extra attack with her active skill, and also how Nevsky is enhancing skill damage. And what we've come to learn over time is that the Nevsky-Joan combo is very, very good at dishing out maximum damage. However, in Ark of Osiris League, teams go with the Joan primary. Nevsky secondary. And this is because of the Joan talent tree, where she gets hasty departure. For 10 seconds after leaving a structure, you go 60% faster. Yeah, 60% march speed is a big deal in Ark of Osiris League, which is all about mobility. Also, the skill damage taken reduction is really good. This is the talent build you would use if you wanted to use Joan Primary for Ark of Osiris. But for KVK battling, which is what most of you are here for, Nevsky should be the primary, and again, the talent build is exactly the same. 
Now, from here, we can talk about the number one combo. And I think, again, number one and number two are so close here. But I think Huo with Nevsky, in terms of just raw punching power, qualifies as the single hardest hitting cavalry combo in the game. You're looking at 2,700 damage factor, slowing your target by 50%. So they're not getting away. And people have been saying, you know, Huo doesn't have any debuffs. He does have a debuff. It's a March speed debuff. And that's not as flashy as a lot of other types of debuffs, but you better believe that if you catch a target out of position for long enough that you can apply this debuff, they're not going to get away and you're going to shred them. And of course, the Nevsky over here with 2,300 damage factor, yeah, I mean, 2,700 damage factor, then 2,300 damage factor, and you're boosting the skill damage a ton here, you're going to melt stuff. You're absolutely going to melt stuff. Now, the reality is that you really need to think about these combos, not in this weird, like, purist, only looking at, like, here's number one, here's number two, but, like, how many cavalry pairs are you using? And once you start to use multiple cavalry combos, we got to mix up who we pair with who to get the most value, the most punch possible. So if you were only to bring one cavalry combo, I think that if you already have Nevsky and Joan, I don't really think you need to invest in Huo at all. You've got Nevsky Joan. It's good enough. It's a great combo. The incremental gain going to Huo with Nevsky, I think is pretty minimal. Now, if you're going to go to two cavalry combos, however, this is where I think there's a ton of value in having Huo. And previously, you would have used Nevsky with Joan and then XY with William. Well, now you just swap out the XY, smash in the Huo, and you've got Nevsky, Joan, Huo, William. This feels to me like a really easy and obvious choice for two great cavalry pairings in the open field. Now, if you wanted to go for three, which I I would believe you might want to do, I could understand that, then here's what you want to do. You want to bring XY back into the mix. I would leave the two combos we just talked about, Nevsky Joan and Huo William, I wouldn't touch them. And then I would bring in XY and I would put XY with somebody who's got some damn tankiness. Now, you have so many options and they're all about equally good. I personally couldn't differentiate between them to tell you this is better than that for sure. But I can say that XY with Minamoto is shockingly good. M Minamoto has a museum buff that is just freaking mental. It's 60% of stats, 30% defense, 30% attack. It is freaking huge. And his single target damage is nuts. And his fourth skill has a great debuff. So XY with Minamoto is actually really, really good. A combo that I, however, have talked about for a very long time and used extensively is XY with Honda. This is also really great. Honda gives XY exactly what he needed, an enhancement to his skill damage, but also a boost to his tankiness. Not a ton of a boost, but a boost nonetheless. However, now that we have a double relic on Mehmed, I don't think I would put any sculptures into Honda just work on Mehmed 100% free to play and then use him as the secondary. And his museum buff is really crazy. He is going to give you a bunch of health. 20% health, 5% skill damage with the first level. But when you max it out, 30% health, 10% skill damage boost. Mehmed is crazy, man. And even though his skill damage is low in terms of damage factor, at least it's area of effect damage. And that is still really a great combo, XY and Mehmed. Now, with that said, you have another cavalry commander you could use. You could do XY, and this is a classic, a commander that I once invested in and maxed, but then the game gave the option to refund your investments in him because they changed around his kit a little bit, if I remember correctly. And I, I was like, all right, I'll take the sculptures back. That's Chandra Gupta, Okay. XY with Chandra Gupta is the sort of original old school cool combo for XY. And it works in part because Chandra Gupta has health. He's got an amazing debuff. And also the rage cycles are so fast on XY that you can take advantage of the uh, sort of damage boost from Chandra Gupta as the secondary 
still boosting XY's active skill on the next skill cycle. Of course, if you also had Saladin, you could do XY Saladin if that's the route you wanted to go, and you put a Relic on the Saladin. Even though he's not top tier, he still can hit pretty moderately, okay? Now, if you're going to four cavalry combos, which is something I always like try to cover in my videos. I used to talk about, oh, what if you go to five? What if you go to... But the thing is that now that armaments are in the game, I have a hard time believing that it will be correct to go to four cavalry combos. Why? Well, look, you're going to get these armaments, and these armaments will come randomly with what troop type they're benefiting. Sometimes you'll even get siege stats, right? So you theoretically, over a sufficiently long period of time, get an even amount, an even quality of armaments for each troop type. And if that's true for most people, which it should be, then over-indexing on any one troop type means you will have sub-optimal armaments compared to what you could have had if you had a nice diversity of troop types. Okay, so I don't think this is a good idea anymore to go to four cavalry combos. But if you did, what would you do? Probably Nevsky Joan, probably Huo William, probably XY with either Chandra Gupta or Minamoto, and then I would probably use a Justinian primary paired with either Honda or Mehmed. That would be a way you could do it, or with Minamoto. And Justinian is kind of a weird one. I tested with him. He's okay in the open field, but he offers you literally no debuffs at all. He is one of the commanders that I lovingly refer to as a stat stick, and that's it. What, is it, what does that mean? Well, he does cool stuff if you rally, but if you're not rallying, he's doing 2,500 damage factor. Well, that's good. That's that's actually very good. His next skill gives you nice defense, damage, and march speed if you're off territory. His next skill gives a modest amount of health, 20%, and then some stuff related to attacking cities and strongholds. You're not doing that. Um, and then lastly, he's got some attack and instant proc damage and more instant proc damage when he is expertise. I think Justinian is an interesting idea if you're investing in lots of cavalry commanders for some reason, even if it's just for open field, because you can also rally with him, which like, you know, you could invest in Chandra Gupta, but you can't rally with Chandra Gupta. And also these days, his damage factor is like looking pretty low compared to other options. So I feel like Justinian also could be a pretty good swap in um, for the sort of three cavalry pair combo I was describing, where like maybe you just use XY with Justinian, and that might actually be the better way to go. He's got only 20% health and 30% defense. That's, pr that's pretty good, right? That makes your XY really tanky as well. It's just, you know, how many people can really go in and max all those commanders that are relatively new? Probably not all that many. But I do want to mention Justinian as a strong contender because look, man, just the damage factor these days is just going up and up and up. And that trend is assuredly only going to continue over the years. From here, we can start to talk about equipment. And man, equipment is in such a weird spot. Without getting into all the details, the developers just announced that they plan to uh, add new legendary equipment. The player reaction to that was very strong, so they're evaluating how they're going to add it. But as of now, this would be the best legendary set, but you shouldn't craft any legendaries because the whole system is being upended and we don't know how yet, and it could be very unfavorable the way in which those changes are applied. Now, I assume that they're going to rework things and make them really positive, but I just don't think it's safe now to craft cavalry armor. But if you were... This would be your best option with the KVK weapon and helmet. Alternatively, if you didn't have the KVK weapon and helmet, the next best set I could show you, it would look like this. You would basically use the set helmet, set weapon, set chest, set boots, the Ash of the Dawn, and Navarre's control. Now, most people are looking at this going like, bro, give me some early game options, and I'm very happy to do that. If we get a look at cavalry equipment, we can start all the way at some of the highest value stuff at the beginning, which includes the Vanguard set. This set is wicked. It gives a ton of stats. It's green. It's a weapon and some legs, and it gives you a set boost as well. This is your starting point for cavalry. From there, in terms of other value, 
there's another set that we can get a look at, and that set is blue. It's Windswept. Now, Windswept isn't going to give you as many stats, but it is going to give you a two-piece bonus and a four-piece bonus. Pretty much everybody will make Windswept at some point in their Rise of Kingdoms career, and if you don't special talent it right away, you could always switch it to some other troop type, specifically infantry, if you really wanted to. So the Windswept set is another really cool entry point for cavalry. Keep in mind that you could use Windswept with Vanguard, and that is a fine starting point. However, once you want to start to make individual pieces, there are several individual pieces that are really good. The first that is exceedingly good is the Expedition War Helmet. Now, why is that? In terms of stat priority in Rise of Kingdoms, health is the best, then defense, then attack. This has to do with something I've explained in many videos where stats have diminishing returns. The more of a stat you have, the less valuable more of that stat becomes. What that means is that because the game gives you lots of attack from KVK technology, and it gives you lots of attack and defense from Alliance technology, health is very often the lowest stat in your roster. So point for point, health generally gives you better trades. That's why health is considered to be the best stat. So for open field, Getting defense here is really good because when you upgrade to a epic helmet, now you're switching over to attack, which is not a great stat sort of swap from defense to attack. So this blue helmet you could use for a long time, and it's something you'd upgrade from later. In terms of chest pieces, an epic pattern that will serve you very well is the Dark Lord's Blessing. It gives you cavalry defense. Now, eventually when we upgrade to legendaries, you could have access to health, but again, legendaries are just weird. We're not talking about them right now because they're, they're just so weird. So the Dark Lord's Blessing is solid. 8% cavalry defense. That's 10 and a half if you have the special talent. Alternatively, even at the green tier, Melanie's Plate's freaking awesome. 4% defense. Um, that is a great choice, and I would start there. Um, at the Gloves, you actually have an amazing epic choice. It's at Sufferance. When talented, this is 4% attack and 4% health, which is awesome. Look at this. The legendary Navar's Control that I described earlier is 8% health. So you're basically just stat swapping from attack to health when you go to the legendary tier. There's a lot of materials for a stat swap. What I'm trying to say is that you get this epic, you lock that in for a long time. One of the last things you'll upgrade. In addition, one of the last things you'll upgrade is the gladiator legs. They give health. 10 and a half when talented is really good. Get to this after you upgrade from your Vanguard and stick with this for a long time. Don't go to Legendary on this spot until toward the very end. In addition, when we look at the boots, boots are kind of weird here. Um, You're going to use Windswept for a while and the Cav Health is good, but eventually you'll upgrade to the Epic because even though you're switching to attack, it's a lot more stats You'll go with the talent on this. I think it's 7.5% cavalry attack when talented, which is way better than I think the, was probably 3.5% health that you'll have on Windswept with the talent. And you know, the march speed is nice, but it's it's not the most important thing. I think stats are generally considered to be the most important. And in terms of the weapon, cavalry really kind of luck out again. Like I mentioned, you start with this green, but eventually you're going to upgrade to a Heart of the Saint which when talented gives you 17% defense, which is awesome. And when you eventually upgrade to a legendary, it might be giving you attack, which you're not as excited about as a stat anyways. So you can just stick with this epic for a very, very long time, which is going to be a great way to go. So cavalry have some really good equipment options, and I'm eager to see how that sort of changes at the legendary tier once we see kind of how the new equipment in the end game is going to work. Now, in terms of the order in which you invest in Legendary Commanders, this gets a little bit weird for Cavalry because there's a lot of debate between Huo and Nevsky. And I think right now the popular choice for a first investment for a Legendary Cavalry Commander is not Huo, it's actually Nevsky, which is a little bit weird. I think if you're building to just one Cavalry combo, probably your best bet is to go for that one combo I described as number one. You work on Nevsky, and you work on Huo, and you smash them together. Or alternatively, 
If you're just getting to season a conquest and you're like, bro, I have too many projects, you can start with Nevsky and pair with Minamoto. And that is a fine starting point after you get your relic on the Minamoto. That is a great way to go. Now, if you wanted to have obviously more cavalry combos, I would pick probably just a couple cavalry commanders to invest in. So by that, I mean maybe just go for Nevsky and Huo and then use like Mehmed and Minamoto as the secondaries. Because the thing is, you could move all in on a bunch of cavalry commanders, but I feel like it's generally a very bad idea to invest in a commander that is number four as the best commander of a troop type. Because the the time, like as soon as we get a new cavalry commander, that number four commander is probably going to get phased out, right? Because you should use a diversity of troop types, as I described earlier, you probably have two cavalry combos, typically at most. Well, if you only have two cavalry combos, again, the number four commander on that list is the sort of fourth best commander is going to get cycled out in, let's say, nine to 12 months from now when new cavalry land in the game. The point I'm trying to make is that it's very bad to be investing in commanders that are number four or even potentially number three for their troop type. You want to try to pick the very best commanders that will be viable for the longest period of time. And so new players to the game should not be focusing on a zillion cavalry commanders up front, but they should look at, hey, what's the best cav commander? Let's do some of that. What's the best archer commander? Let's get some of that rolling. And let's do the best infantry commander and get some of that rolling as well. But I've covered investment order extensively in other videos. I'll have a card in the end screen for that one in just a second. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And if you made it 25 minutes or 30 minutes into a Chiswell Gaming video, do me the honor of throwing a like on the vid. And if you're looking for more detailed guidance about the best free-to-play or low-spend equipment before you get to the legendary stuff, I'll have a card in the end screen for that one as well. Hope you'll check those vids out.